Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We have few gentlemen here, so let's say gentlemen too. I think she can started several years ago because Ezine said her mother inspired her. Dada, I greet you. She is actually the one that started She Can. She Can was nameless then. So Ezine it just manifested it. And there are many She Can mothers here. I see them. My mom is here too. Stand up. She also taught me that I can. To all the mothers here who made She Can. To all the mothers here who made She Can a reality, I greet you. Now, they said I'm the first female urologist in Nigeria. Okay. I didn't set out to be that. I just wanted to be a medical doctor. And then when I started medicine, I said, okay, I want to be a surgeon. So many people have come up to give their stories today. Someone wanted to be an actress. I know when she stood here, I said she's supposed to be an actress. I think Riley should start getting, maybe she should, you know the Airtel adverts. I, I think she should do Relish adverts and just be like, you know, those two rivals in Airtel that are always fighting. <laughs> yes, you know, maybe they should maximize that acting. You, you, you should be an actress. You know, when you want something, you really actually find yourself walking towards it because that work looks like a play. I wanted to be a doctor because my father is a doctor. And like what Tonya Cole said, he said, be an example. Most times children end up what their parents did if they were proud of it. I saw beauty in my father being a doctor. Now my mom is a lawyer. The influence of my mother is not about my career choice. It's about the principles that made me achieve that ambition. Principles like hard work. My parents were very good to so many people. They helped people to rise. So I was not shocked when I found strangers helping me. You cannot plant banana and reap cassava. It's not possible. So my father's influence, we were closer to him. You know how girls are with their fathers, you know, your father is their first boyfriend and you know, oh, what not. And you know, my mom probably just managed us because we, she gave birth to us. If not, ha, that rivalry. But you see, I watched him. We will close from school, we will walk to the hospital, we will stay there with him till he closes, we will go home together. So you see all this, uh, a woman must be at home at 2 o'clock and start cooking and washing and no, 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 no. We stayed with my dad at work, we we'll go home together. So hospital was demystified to me very early. My older sister is a dentist. I am a doctor. So you see, it, it was just natural for us to go there. Now, some people said they had humble backgrounds. Sometimes a humble background gives you that motivation to fight something. I do not have humble background though. And it is easier when you have everything, you will not do anything. Shabi, they've done it for you before. You are seeing food to eat. Your school fees is being paid. Nothing happened. In fact, you were even choosing which car to enter. Hey, that one, you will not walk. So you must always find some motivation, even if it is self-generated. You cannot say that it is, it is the absence of lack that makes you always be motivated. When everybody comes to give their story, you say, I don't belong in that category because my father gave me everything. No. What do you want for yourself that your father cannot give you? Okay, you want what your father is. I'm a doctor, he's a doctor. What is it that you can attain that is better or different from his own? If nobody motivates you, if a condition does not motivate you, I think you should motivate yourself. You cannot just be like what everybody else is. Now, last year's conference was like, yes, she can. Abby, so it is established that all of us have something in us. Okay, this year now is that she can do more. So do more is the key word here, right? Meaning that I am addressing people that already have potential. So let's not start preaching that pray for potential, deliverance for potential, for potential. No, 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 potential is there, so it's established. So this is postgraduate class. Now, in medical school, 
There's a trend now that there's a gender reversal. There are more females in medical school than males. Am I right? Last to come students, how many ladies are here? All ladies. Now, when I teach in class, you see a group of nine students in your unit. Seven are ladies. And how many are in the class? Seven. I thought you are nine. Yes. Who are the other two? Two guys. They never come to school. When you have Davido, <laughs> you know, Bonner boy, you come to do this medicine for seven years plus strike. So it will be seven plus X. X can be between two to four years. Then you will do house job. You may not be paid. You will do youth service. Mm, Sambisa, you know. And then when they finish, you don't get a job. Then you now start borrowing money from family and friends to try and write foreign exams to go abroad because our minister said that we can export doctors. And then when you finish doing that, guess what happens? They will be calling you Doki, Doki. And you know this, all these other health workers and other people, they are sarcastic. They will say, Doki Oloye. They never call you Doki Olowo because they know you don't have money. You stand out. You are just a doctor. So most men have realized that this is not the fastest way to be relevant in the society. So what do they do? Apart from those that have passion for medicine, they divert to other things. A four-year course, maybe do some skills that will generate income, look at their society and meet those needs. So they push medicine to the women. And that's why there are more females in medical school. So we need to start looking at a future where women would take over critical parts of the medical practice in specialization. So it's not surprising you start seeing women in surgery now. Before, you know Nigerian men, ah, it's only a man that has hearts to see blood that will cut a human being open. What is there? Don't we cut meat in the kitchen? <laughs> Don't you kill chicken? Eh, it's the same thing. Shebi is blood. Blood is red. Yes. So it's, 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 not, it's not anything so enigmatic again. So there are more women. We are going to have more women in surgery, more women in medicine, more women treating cancers in oncology, more women in pediatrics. Yes, we have many pediatrics. We are going to have more women even sub-specializing. And that is the future of medicine. More women everywhere, like MTN. Now, you finish. And you know, to show you how bad this gender bias could be, in Japan, they were actually altering the results of medical school so that women do not come in. The scandal came out last year. It was such a big shame. Women will pass at entry level. They will alter it so that they give men the advantage to do medicine. That is in Japan. So before you run away, remember that Oibo land, day to day, have biases against women. So anywhere you find yourself, you just need to be self-confident with your gender. Now, when you do this medicine, you finally finish. The society is going to define you. There's a stereotype. You are expected to be a career woman because you did not go to medical school to go and sit down and do nothing. Even if you want to do nothing, you want to be a lazy Nigerian youth. Guess what? There are too many sick people in Nigeria. Medicine is not something that it's easy to combine with other things. You're either a doctor or you are not. I'm sorry to say this, even if you have other life skills that may be lucrative, you may end up sacrificing them. I used to bake. I baked so much in Ibadan that I realized I would get BSC catering. Guess what? In 500 level, I had a dialogue with myself. I say, if you want to graduate, I know in you, if you repeat, hey, it's not one year old, you may stay two years because all the national unions are in Ibadan. So whenever they strike, you will shut down. I had to tell myself, leave this baking of cake alone. Orders today, orders tomorrow, orders today. I had to stop it. Till date, I have not returned to it commercially. I just know I can bake. So what have I used it for? Transfer it, let my children be learning it. Uh, maybe their own life will be a bit more flexible. But medicine is rigid. And that's where I found myself. Not angry. It's still, and that's why you must find what you like so that when you sacrifice so much for it, you don't feel as if you've lost anything. And then you're expected to start having a family. Some start from medical school. Some start immediately after or maybe some years later. This same medicine is a jealous lover. It competes with your time. It takes everything from you. You have a husband that's probably coming to the office with your child. He will give you to breastfeed, collect the child back, you run back in, see patients. I had a colleague that had an asthma attack when she was seeing patients. 
We all rushed. We attended to her, took her to emergency. By the time we came back, the patient that was there said, hey, I was the one that the doctor was seeing before she had asthma. Please continue your work. They don't care about you. In fact, one was even taunting her. Doctor that is falling sick, is that a doctor? So you see, it competes with your time. The people closest to you will take the heat. And that's why you must be very selective in who you choose. You notice that doctors marry themselves. <laughs> because now we, we. Uh, the man is on call, you're on call. You may decide to just find one call room where you will lock your children. Uh, then when you, you are facing patients, he, he will run back and feed them. Then you, you will come, stay with them, he, he will go back. That's how we roll. Mm -hmm. And then the selection of the appropriate specialty you want to do. Medicine is very wide. I was forced to read medicine. My parents pushed me to read medicine so that they would call themselves the yard, the daddy doctor. I agree. But you know the only way of escape is to finish. You must graduate. Because if you go back home, you don't graduate, they will not give me one naira. Last second students, if you graduate, oh, eh, eh. if you don't graduate, you cannot chase your dream. Shall I graduate first and be a doctor that is singing like Dr. Seed? <laughs> Dr. Seed was my classmate. I have another one that I was watching Super Story one day. I saw Wale. I said, it's my classmate again. My class was so many. So many of us have left medicine. But you know what? They are doing very well where they are. So you must graduate first. When you graduate, you now, now need to think, do I want to do medicine or do I want to subspecialize? Fine. You want to subspecialize. Now, based on your personality, and that's why it's important to know who you are and what you want, you will find where you fit in into medicine. I may have chosen surgery because I saw my dad operate, but the truth is that I'm very good with my hands. I, I knit, I sew, I bake, and all these skills may be lucrative for business, but they are also, um, they, it's, it's, the, the effect of it helped me in surgery, steady fingers to operate. Not that you are holding kidney in the human body and you are shaking like this, no. You know, a woman that cooks a lot, that dices a lot, a chef probably has more steadier hands than a regular person. So some of these skills are transferable to other aspects. So don't look down on anything. It has a way of manifesting better in other aspects. So you choose. And what are the stereotypes that people have of women in medicine? The first thing they will, see, they will say when you are passing in the hospital, nurse. Nurse. I remember I went for ward round, consultants running ward round, and I saw the patient. The man was more interested in my senior registrars and what they were saying. I said, Baba, listen to me. We were trying to break the news that I had prostate cancer. He said, you this woman, shift to the side. Let me hear what these men are saying. So I left him with the men. He na so those ones now said, ah, Baba, we'll come back later. And you, he said, you just drove away the ogre. He said, hey, but his doctor is Dr. Abolaniwa. That is not that woman. He said, that is the Dr. Abolaniwa. He had to send his relatives to apologize to me. Because he was shouting, and I don't want anybody to just mistakenly slap me. So I left him. So when they came back, I came back to him and said, Sir, why didn't you think I was the one? He said, can you be the one? Don't you know what urology is? I said, ah. I do. He said, what are you doing there? I said, where? He said, there. Where is there? He said, ah. Or oh, I have patients that say, Dr. Kinney, that doctor, uh, is that doctor that handles Kinney? Uh, Kinney, Kinney? <laughs> Kinney, Kinney, you know. So there are stereotypes from patients. Serious stereotypes. You're either the nurse, or if you're a doctor, you must be a pediatrician as a woman. Because you're a young mom, you know, or you, or maybe, I don't know, community medicine, something that they feel that is more feminine. Now, when you get into surgery, they will say, go to pediatric surgery. Go to plastic surgery, where you are thinking of beauty, because all they see about plastic surgery is Dr. 90210. Then you now open your mouth and say you want to do orthopedic surgery, cardiothoracic, uh, neurosurgery. I know that's where the money is. Urology. You see, all the old men in Nigeria will come to us. <laughs> I'm always guaranteed customers. Because their prostate must enlarge. It is the way God made it. So all the men in the house, look at me very well. 
If you are nice, you get a discount. So, what are women doing there? I said the future of medicine is that women are going to enter every aspect, whether it is male-dominated or not. We shouldn't even use the word male-dominated again. Because what a man can do, a woman can also do. I don't want to say better. Because better has to do with nature of the person involved and nurture. What did the environment present to him? What is he composed of himself? Is the person maybe self-motivated or genetically constituted to be good? Did the environment stimulate this goodness, nature and nurture? So when people are shouting, what a man can do, a man can do better, give the woman she fails now, it will not be as if that statement is false. We can do anything a man can do, physically. Maybe biologically there are differences because of the way we are created, but that's where it stops. But career-wise, there's no difference between us. So the stereotypes are there. Now, what are the society norms for a woman? You must marry. You must have a head, as if your heads are not enough. You must, they say, no, you are the neck. Your job is to be turning left and right. Are you last, ma? <laughs> no. You must have children. When you marry, they will not say, what of children? When you have a child, they say, you will need a bureau. When you have the two, three, four, they will push you to have seven. Then they will now say, have they entered school? Every time the competition changes, even when you have conquered all this, they will say, are you not yet a grandmother? Ha. So it doesn't stop for a woman. Society doesn't place this type of demands on a man. They will tell the man, be a provider. Be a provider. But you as a woman are not just providing. You are nurturing. You are caring. You are working. You are even encouraging the man with you. So your job is even multiple. How do you combine all this with career and still achieve? You need to have some personal virtues. But before you even get to that point, I think there are some trigger points we get to in life that will make us take a decision. I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. Right from my medical school, the motivation to be an orthopedic surgeon was I mistakenly entered theater in my 300 level. I wasn't supposed to be there then. I had not done my part one. And I saw them doing amputation for a diabetic foot. Amputation. I don't know how cutting off of the leg motivated me to be an orthopedic surgeon. All I just saw was that this leg is not good, it needs to go. Orthopedics is so practical. Something is bent, straighten it out. Something should be straight and is bent. Okay, something is uh, uh, bent and it's supposed to be straight, straighten it. Something is supposed to be bent and it's straight, bend it back. Auto is very practical and that's what I wanted. For 10 years I thought of orthopedics. Then I did urology rotation and that was it. Urology is surgical management of diseases of the kidney, urinary system, kidney, bladder, ureter, and also the reproductive system of men. Hmm? <laughs> Penis, scrotum, testes, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, atibe ebelo. So I sound like Dr. Yemkem. Power failure, weak erection, watch wrist palm, things crawling around the body. Those are the things I treat. So I did urology posting. I saw all these things and I left orthopedics. Ask me how it happened, I don't know. I don't know. I just fell in love with it. Not that I like man, no. Uh -huh. But it happened. Now whether something happens to you by chance or not, you need to chase excellence. You found yourself in this position. Be the best there. Because you never know where they will sing your praise. I started doing urology. People were looking at me suspiciously. Men are very protective of their territory. These are the same men that are gynecologists. At least all of us have given birth here. Man has seen our bum bum. So why on earth do they find it strange that a woman is now coming to their territory they should be happy a woman pays attention to details yes a woman also is more 
you know, she's caring. If a woman handles a patient, a man is more impatient. You know, if a woman handles a patient, she gets more. Doc patients are likely going to open up more to a female doctor. So they should be happy, but they were not. My colleagues were one of my greatest resistances. One of them told me two days after my results came out when I qualified that, we thought you would never finish. We were watching you. I was cold that day. Because he was always encouraging me. But this was what was in his mind. Another one said, I know that it is unholy to be touching men in that place. I said, the same way you touch women in that place as gynecologists. He left me alone. I had all sorts. Um, when you're a female in surgery, they throw all the responsibilities at you. You go for a board meeting. You no, know, you go for a meeting. Your own colleagues, they expect you to serve tea. The people serving are there, but they want you to get up and serve tea. Because you are the only woman amongst men. I used to sit down and cross my legs. Because it's the same salary. My work is even more, because I had to work twice as hard to show that I was really interested in this. Fortunately, I had people that were willing to train me. You can't even, you, you see, sometimes even your bosses will throw some things at you. You will take it. They can't try it with the male trainees. But you are the one they will do it to. If you make noise, they say you are being too emotional. So you swallow a lot as a woman. Being a woman is not child's play. I need to say it here today. Because everybody is shouting she can. She can med. What they want from us is that she can cook. She can wash. She can iron. You see all those four-letter words that are like love? It's actually work. But those things are things that anybody can do. They are survival skills. They are life skills. It shouldn't define you. You cannot plan your day with, by 2 o'clock I have to be cooking. By 7 p.m. I have to wash. And by uh, 9 I have to iron. And then by the time you calculate the number of years you have used washing, cooking, and ironing, by the time you are 70, it's 30 years of your life washing. If you go to heaven, what reward would you get? Boys quarters. What are the personal virtues that we need to have? We need to chase value. We have a way of being complacent and accepting the normal. Okay, I want to be a cook. What type of cook will I be that will stand out is what your target should be. You cannot just be ordinary and want to achieve extraordinary things because your pastor is saying, the Lord will elevate you. The Lord will elevate you. No, you didn't elevate yourself. God does not force reluctant people. He doesn't drag you and say, by force, by fire. Forget the fire that they preach somewhere. You will not get fire if you do not have matches in your life. Please have value. Have value. Value, value is important. What is valuable? I want to be an engineer. What type? What have they done in engineering that, that there's a gap that I can fill? You need to have value. And that value will cut across everything, including your relationships. Some of you carry baggage. Terrible friends. Blackmailers. Shared excess weight to... Please, you are not Loma. One thing I learned early was to run away from envious friends. Let me say it strictly. Envious people can kill. Because envy is a gradual process. It starts little by little. It's, you do something and it is your closest friend that can't tell you congratulations. Note it. Don't, it's not that you're being petty. You need to note it. Because there are too many people that are angry these days. Because Every step you make in life is not really about your personal effort totally. It's about the support systems you have around you. If you put weak scaffolding around you, even the building will never be completed. The scaffolding will even break and kill other workers. Envious people, you need to find how you identify them. Stop deceiving yourself. Don't be someone that is so vulnerable to cheap praise. You bought a pair of shoes, they are hailing you. I see men in clubs sometimes. Hey, Okurime J. Hey, over what? He just wore a new pair of jeans. And they'll be hailing him, hailing him. Or is that Bero to a politician? They are hailing him. Please, how does that affect the price of fish? 
We need to have more value for ourselves, even with the people around us. Cheap popularity and cheap healings, you don't need it. You need people that will give you the reality of your life and your decisions. You need to shed off excess weight, envious people. Once you identify it, you can relate with them classically and you know, casually, but not bring them close into your inner circle. Don't expose your vulnerabilities and your fears to them. Also, you need to be nice. You cannot receive what you have not given. You are so nasty, you discourage people's dreams. They say women are the greatest enemies of women. No, it is your choices that are the problem. I have the best of relationships I've had are from women. Because men, when you go and show them your vulnerabilities, there may be a price. Not everybody is honorable. But when you have stimulating female relationships, women are one of the strongest supporters you can have in life. Even the men rely on women. Why can't we rely on ourselves? We should stop stigmatizing ourselves and say women are the enemies of women. It's a lie that is being sold to us so that you don't trust your fellow strong woman. Traditionally, the symbol of strength of Africa has always been feminine. When did we get to this point that women were second class? I don't understand. Women have always been strong. Even in the olden days, women were the ones that were working. If a man would marry several women because he needed workforce. Even the Bible talks about Proverbs 31 women, all of you used to oppress us. What was the man doing? He was only sitting at the gates. Sitting, sitting. Praising the woman because that was the source of his importance. She was a trader. She was an importer, an exporter, general merchandise. You know, she had servants. Somebody will say you must wash, cook, and iron yourself. Washing machine is contraindicated. No. This woman had servants. She controlled people. That was a woman of influence and power. Why is it that we read the Bible and other books upside down? Even in Islam, women have serious rights. They will not tell you. You know, in Islam, it's a woman that owns gold. A man shouldn't wear gold. True or false? You don't know. I'm telling you now. Your husband is wearing a very thick chain. You are wearing panda. Change it. Identify people that could be your mentors. Mentors could cut across female and male. It's important. Somebody that's gone before you. Because their experiences may not be the same as yours. And they will teach you on theirs why you are now gaining your own experience. It's very important. And you need to be realistic. I want to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. I agree. But whoever needs to build a house must consider the cost. What does it entail? Can I do it? Can I not do it? You need to be able to know what you are capable of doing and if you can achieve what you plan to achieve. You need to be realistic. Don't live in the frenzy of it is well, the Lord will do No, 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 don't be calling God into things that you have made a mess of. Eh? You need to be open and honest to yourself, even before you're open and honest to God. Because even if you lie to him, he knows what you are saying. He'll just be looking at you. When you are ready, speak the right thing. Now, another thing we need to get rid of is to please people. Because there are so many stereotypes, it's convenient for you to fit into them. They have told me that when I leave med school, I must marry. And then you just marry to please everybody. You are facing abuse, you can't leave to please everybody. I want to be a pilot, but because they say I'll be flying and my hours are a bit um, you know, inconvenient for the family, I would choose to be a, what, what is, um, a teacher and uh, go and come, I'm, I'm on leave during the holidays and all for family. And then you don't realize you are bitter. And when your children grow up, you start forcing these things down their throats because you didn't achieve it. People pleasing needs to stop. It's not good for a career or a focus-driven woman. Whether you even want to go into business, you can't be pleasing everybody. Ah, in this part of the nation, you must hand over all your salary to your husband because he's the head and you are the neck. You know, and then you make money. 
and you have someone that is financially irresponsible, it's not going to be easy. Another thing is that please don't let people despise your youth. In Nigeria, we are so fond of having this idea that young people cannot achieve things. Abroad, professors are 35. In Nigeria, you must have white hair. Patients come to see me, and when they say I'm a woman, minus one. I'm young, minus 20. She can't know anything. Her head must be empty. In fact, some of my colleagues told me that the older professor helped me to pass. But your work will always speak for you. And finally, you need to realize that you're special. You are, you are not a photocopy. Neither is there a counterfeit of you. You are made specially. There's something about you that is different from the next person, even if you're from the same father and mother. It's very important that you need to identify this and know that you stand on your own. You are the main determinant of your success. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to say why a woman should be in this. A woman can be anything. Now we are saying you can do more than that's anything that you can be. And that's what we are trying to speak to everybody about in this conference. You can do more. Don't just take the normal. Go extraordinary. Because people have done it. There's nothing stopping you from doing it. Thank you. It's time for her to take a stand. She can do more. She can do anything she wants. There's no limit. There's no mountain that she can.